there's a unity tour happening right now. Bernie Sanders is going around with Tom Perez, and it is one of the most disgusting displays of bullshit that I've seen in quite a while, and I really don't know what Bernie Sanders thinks he's trying to pull. It's that same kind of stuff he was doing when he was stumping for Hillary. It's like, and you know, he couldn't get five people to show up at a gymnasium to listen to him tell bullshit about Hillary Clinton, and now here he is going around saying bullshit about the Democratic Party like as if there's going to be some unity happening. I'm going to tell Bernie Sanders right now and anybody else who thinks that, that progressives like me are going to unify with Tom Perez and his bullshit warmed over corporatist agenda, which just got the Democratic Party wiped out from coast to coast. That's not happening. I'm not going to support a corporatist Democrat because Bernie Sanders stands next to him. In fact, Bernie Sanders told us a year ago that we shouldn't listen to him. That's what Bernie Sanders said. So how do you feel about this unity tour with the Democrats? Uh, yeah, if if Bernie Sanders does something, I try to give him the benefit of the doubt more so than other politicians. But there's absolutely no way I can rationalize this because Bernie Sanders has repeatedly lambasted Democrats. He said they need to reform X, they need to reform Y, Z. But he's decided to imply that we should unify behind the Democratic Party uh, before they've done anything to reform. And in fact, they just gave us the middle finger. Um, with They voted down a ban on lobbyist contributions the same day that Tom Perez became the new DNC chair. So they've done nothing to show to us that they are willing to embrace progressive reforms. And we see a couple of articles, articles in Politico and The Hill about how, you know, Dems are embracing Bernie now. Uh, that sounds great. Let's see it. I want I want to actually see some action. I don't want to hear about how they're embracing Bernie Sanders because here's how it looks to me. They continue to trot out progressives like Keith Ellison, who, you know, progressives already have some problems with him, but he's he is, you know, he's better than Tom Perez. We'll put it that way. They trot out Keith Ellison. Um, they drag Bernie Sanders along and they say, hey, we're like this guy. Meanwhile, they haven't changed a single thing. So. I don't get what the goal of Bernie Sanders' unity tour is. It seems like a complete contradiction given all of the criticism that he's talked about with respect to the Democratic Party. So I'm not with Bernie on this issue, and I think that's fine because the difference between um, us and Hillary Clinton supporters is that we don't just blindly you know, follow someone and support them because of a cult of personality. We actually are able to disagree with them if they do something that doesn't make sense. Bernie, this makes no sense. And I know that, you know, I took a little bit of heat for talking about this, but uh, it makes no sense to me. I'm not unifying behind the Democratic Party um, until I see that they change. And they've, they've, if anything, they've given us, you know, the cold shoulder and have communicated to us that they're not going to change a single thing. So there's going to be no unity. I, it, it makes no sense to me, Jimmy. Well, there's, there's actually a unity commission. Right now, you heard about that unity commission, right? There's a unity commission. And what do you think about the... I, I don't think much of it. I'm going to look more into it, but it just... Well, I don't understand what that is about. Like, it's like the Democrats still don't know who they are. You still don't know what you're supposed to be for. What do you mean? You, what do you want to unify? I don't understand what that fuck point of a unity commission is. Well, I'll tell you what it's about, Jimmy. They are patting progressives on the head. They're saying, we're listening to you. It's okay. You get a seat at the table. But what they don't tell you and what's downplayed in the articles about the Unity Commission is that this Unity Commission, will it be hearing about, you know, reforming the Democratic Party when it comes to uh, superdelegates and closed primaries? Yeah, that's technically true. But they're not giving progressives an equal seat at the table. So I don't know if you know about the voting in the Unity to, uh, Unity Commission, but there's about eight people, I believe, I could be wrong, could be seven, on the Bernie Sanders side. So Bernie Sanders appointed um, seven or eight people. Hillary Clinton chose nine people. Tom Perez chose three people. So any reform that they want to implement, that progressives want to implement, they could vote it down like that. So they're giving us a seat at the table, but they're not going to implement our changes. And so, so and I so, find it insulting. I find it more. I exactly. I do, too. I find it not only insulting. I find it insulting on several levels because they're the ones who wag their finger at us saying that we have to grow up and we have to do. We don't understand how the world works. Yet here they are completely wiped out as a party. Again, I'll, I'll keep saying it from coast to coast, from state house to state house, from the House to the Senate to the White House. They are completely wiped out and they are willing to change nothing.
And and so it's insulting at an intelligence level. It's insulting to me as a progressive because you're lying to us by saying you care about us. It's it's a it's so it's insulting. It's ridiculous. And then again, we still get my finger. I, I'm still called a petulant child because I'm holding the Democrats feet to the fire and people are like, hey, the election's over. It's time to unite. And I'm like, no, you guys want to unite around the same shit that got you wiped out. Mm -hmm. Uh, what so where do you see so i guess let me ask you let me ask you a question instead of just make a stupid statement like that let me ask you a question where do you see where do you what do you think bernie's doing this for um i don't think that bernie sanders has any malicious intentions so i i can't i honestly don't know but here's what i think it is i think that he believes that this will somehow make the democratic party grassroots so if if you hold tom perez's hand and you drag him along to all these red states and show him what to talk about maybe that will change but the the problem with that that and look this is a straw man of what i think bernie sanders is doing but if that is in fact bernie sanders strategy then the problem is you cannot become grassroots if you're still taking corporate money that's that's a huge that that's a non-starter so what bernie sanders should have said is look if you want my assistance which you should be begging me to do because yeah i'm the most popular politician in the country um then here's what you got to do first of all you got to stop taking large uh large uh donations from multinational corporations and they're raking in a lot of money because they know that the general electorate is already tired of donald trump so you know there's talk that maybe donald trump will lose in 2020 so um I don't know what Bernie Sanders' goal is here, um, but it doesn't look like it's a strategy that will be conducive to any type of reform whatsoever. And if anything, I think that it's going to kind of damage the uh, reputation of Bernie Sanders, you know, by aligning with someone as egregious as Tom Perez, who, by the way, helped smear Bernie Sanders. I, I mean, know! Uh, if you, right? Thank you. Nobody, nobody is mentioning this, but one, he said that the primary is rigged, then he changed his position. And then uh, if you go back and read the emails, he said, well, you know what? Bernie Sanders may have won this state, but here's what's going to happen. Since since Bernie Sanders, and I'm paraphrasing, since Bernie Sanders is getting all this millennial support, we're going to say he's only getting white male millennial support. He's only successful among white males, um, and they're the devil. So if Bernie Sanders, you know, is is only getting that type of support, then we're going to change this. We're going to make it seem as though he's racially insensitive. We're going to plant that seed. And of course, we, we saw what that turned into. Uh, Tom Perez manufactured that narrative. So it, I find it insulting. Bernie Sanders, to me, it it pissed me off. And my whole argument was that Bernie Sanders has got to stop being so nice. They've shown time and again they want nothing to do with Bernie. So now it's time to show them some tough love. Tell them to fuck off if they're not going to implement Bernie Sanders reforms. Because Bernie Sanders is wasting his breath in trying to go on these tours with Tom Perez if they haven't changed a thing. Well, they haven't changed a thing. I mean, that's the, they, they still have super delegates. They voted to take corporate money. And Bernie Sanders is doing the exact thing that we hate about Democrats. They're, he's fucking rolling over and not standing up. And that is exactly what we hate about Democrats. And Bernie Sanders is doing the exact fucking thing. So I have no idea what he thinks he's doing or what's going on. But if he doesn't leave the Democratic Party and do that draft Bernie Nick Brana thing, it's the Democrat. It's done. They're a dead fucking party. They are a dead party. Do you agree with that when I say that, that they're a dead party? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and here's the thing. I want to mention that the draft Bernie thing, because people, they kind of give me some pushback and they say, Mike, it's not going to happen. Um, here's the thing about that. Is it are the odds stacked against, you know, a people's party led by Bernie? Of course it is. But that's not the point. The point is that we have leverage that Bernie Sanders has leverage. So he says, look, you see these millions of people, they're leaving the Democratic Party. They're joining my party now. Either you change or my party takes over. And this is what made Donald Trump successful in the Republican Party as an anti-establishment candidate. When it seemed as though the RNC and, you know, Republican establishment people were trying to do shenanigans, what did Donald Trump do? He said, uh, if you do this, I will be running as an independent and you lose. Bernie Sand, you know, if Bernie Sanders did that, I think the DNC would have been less inclined to just brazenly rig the primary against him. So I want Bernie Sanders to have leverage. And by going on this unity tour, he's kind of putting up the white flag and is saying, you know what, I, I get it, Democrats, I have to surrender because 
you're the only chance we got. You're the opposition to Donald Trump, and that's true. They're the, they're, you know, they're the opposition party. Uh, we have no choice, so I surrender. That's what it feels like, and it, it's not a strategy when we, when progressives desperately need leverage right now. We desperately need it. Well, what what I told people before the election was that if everybody who agreed with the fact that the voting for lesser of two evil is what gave us Trump, if everybody who agreed with that actually voted for Jill Stein, she would have got probably 15% of the vote, and then Hillary Clinton would have had to change. She would have mm-hmm. had to appoint a progressive as vice president. She would have had to adopt certain... Le- they would have had to gotten gotten rid of... Uh, the change the DNC. There would have... that. So that's what you do. You have to use your leverage, and your leverage is before the goddamn election. And Bernie Sanders didn't use his leverage before. In fact, he used his leverage to kill his own goddamn movement and try to get people who are sick and tired of corruption in government to support corruption in government because of Donald Trump. That was a losing argument, and they lost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, so go. I got to tell you, I'm just I'm flummoxed at the Democratic Party. I'm flummoxed at the Democratic establishment media. I cannot get over that they think this is going to happen. I will never vote for a corporate Democrat. That is not happening. Will you ever vote for a corporate Democrat? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this one question. You don't have to answer this if you don't want to. Mm. But but uh, I played a video on my show where Keith Ellison told the progressives to buck up, even though the Democratic Party has uh, put their thumb in our eye at every turn and let us know that they're not going to reform and that they're not going to ever listen to us. We're supposed to steep. I took that as we're supposed to still go along, buck up. And mm-hmm. I took a lot of heat for saying that. What did you, what did you think with the, about the Keith Ellison saying that? Did you have a thought on that? Um, it, it rubbed me the wrong way uh, because we don't have to buck up. We were, you know, as human beings who are being screwed over by our government, by both parties, we have a right to be angry. We have a right to be outraged. And as someone who purports to be a grassroots leader, he should be happy that we're angry because without that anger, how do you galvanize people to get the fuck out of their houses? So the thing about, you know, buck up, uh, I just talked to someone yesterday um, who they lost their daughter because she couldn't afford insurance. Let me remind everyone, we live in a first world country. We're the richest nation ever. And we have citizens dying because we don't have the same healthcare system that uh, the country north of the border has. It, it's unacceptable. And I'm not going to buck up. I'm not going to be, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to be all cheery. Oh, you know, we make, you know, progress here and there a couple of years. We make, you know, we move a little bit more incrementally in the right direction. Uh, no, with, with the pace that we're, you know, the pace with which we're moving towards, you know, just catastrophe, maybe another economic cr- crash, um, income and wealth inequality with how fast climate change is creeping up. We have no time for incrementalism. I'm not going to buck up. I'm not going to accept crumbs. Now is the time to implement drastic reforms. So um, it rubbed me the wrong way when he said that because people have a right to be angry. We're getting screwed over. And uh, we are angry and we're not going to stop being angry. And there's a reason why you see people showing up at town halls, not just for Republicans, but for Democrats. It's because we're done taking our crumbs. You know, we're starving. We're getting so hungry that we're going to have to eat the rich pretty soon. We're done waiting. We want a Medicare for all system. We want, uh, you know, tuition free colleges and universities. These are things that other countries have implemented. So being the richest nation on earth, why can't we do that? We're done. So no, I agree with you to um, to not like that type of message. You know, it's, it's kind of just uh, diminishing our our right to be angry. And so and so what do you think is going to happen in 2018? Because I've showed on this show, in fact, we had uh, quote unquote progressive Democrat on the show, uh, Sally Boynton Brown, who's, you know, uh, and I asked her point blank, what do what's the message from the Democratic Party? And, you know, if you saw that video, unfortunately, she didn't have one. She, did, she didn't have a message. Her message was all platitude, just like every time Tom Perez opens his mouth. He has nothing but platitudes and we're not Trump, which is disgusting. Like he should be he gets an F grade. That guy, how, how these failures end up in positions of extreme responsibility and power is just a bl- mind blower to me. And it just shows you what corporate money uh, actually does. So I guess, what do you think is going to happen in 2018? Do you think that the Democrats are going to be able to take over? Like, they should be able to take over. You see what's happening in Kansas. You see what's happening in Georgia. Mm-hmm. This is how unpopular the Republican Party is, yet the Democrats still can't get out of their own way. What do you think is going to happen in 2018? So 2018 is the Democratic Party's election to lose. 
Yes, it is the case that gerrymandering has given Republicans a huge advantage, um, which they could have stopped if they fought. Um, yes, it is the case that when it comes to the Senate, uh, you know, the Democratic Party, they're disadvantaged. But every single election is the Democratic Party's election to lose. If you compare the Republican Party to right wing parties around the world, they are they're fringe. They're fringe by international standards. And I know that right now, currently, that doesn't seem like it's the case because you have all these, uh, uh, I guess you could say, alt right nationalistic parties like in France, for example, you know, kind of um, getting a lot of support. But the Republican Party, they're fringe. They're they're not even really a party. They don't represent their own constituents. They represent large multinational corporations, and brazenly so. Now, that doesn't mean that the Democratic Party does that as well, but each election should be simple because Democrats theoretically should be on the side of the issues that the American people cares about. But the fact that, and, and let me just say this, Jimmy, when we keep asking them, you asked Sally what it is that the Democratic Party stood for, how many times has this question been botched? Did they not communicate and think, hey, you know, they're asking this, we got to come up with a message. I heard Tom Perez say today on MSNBC that, well, when we run with hope on the ballot, we win. And even Chris Hayes called him out because that was too bullshit, you know, too bullshitty for Chris Hayes even. But I mean, why haven't they come together and created a message? A, a message is the easiest thing you can do. I can espouse something off the top of my head. We are for single payer. Elect us, you get single payer. That's our number one goal. That's all you have to say. You could still say, you know, we're still going to be corporatists, but single payer. And that is one little thing that you can do to galvanize support. They're just, they're so incompetent and so corrupt that even something that should be easy is incredibly difficult. So it, it's just so frustrating to watch them bungle elections time and again when theoretically they are a party on on the issues that Americans care about. It shouldn't be the case. But you know, when it comes to 2018, I don't it's difficult to predict. I, you know, I think that yeah, they are disadvantaged, but I don't have a good feeling about it. I'm afraid with how how much they've lost, we're getting to the point where um, Republicans can codify a new constitutional amendment. So it's getting really scary. So, you know, with us criticizing them more so than ever now, I think it's very important. They've got to get their shit together. They have less than two years to do that. Otherwise, if Republicans get even more seats, then they can start creating constitutional amendments that will harm us for generations. And that's terrifying. And and I don't want that to happen, obviously. So they, they have to act quickly. They have to reform quickly. There's no time for incrementalism. The situation right now, it, we're in an emergency situation. The time to act is right now. Um, and, and that's how you know, you know people like you and I are responding to it. Well, um, it's supposed to be a bloodbath. It could easily be a takeover. Uh, I mean, of the of the of the government by the Democrats, like like happened in two thousand eight when Barack mm -hmm. Obama and the Democrats took over government, and so my my point was if the Democrats would have been an actually progressive party in two thousand eight and they would have broke up the banks and they would have put those guys in jail and they would have sw actually stopped the wars and they would have made free college and he would have proposed a public option or single payer and all that stuff because they could have given it anything to us they had complete control and a filibuster proof uh, Senate too they had for two months so if they could have done all that stuff they didn't do it we elected a left wing Democratic government and we got right wing policies anyway we got Romney care we got two wars turned into we got the banks made even fucking bigger. We got our po insurance policy even more expensive, our health care. I, I don't know what the point is voting for Democrats anymore. Do you? Uh, you know, it really feels like you can't just look at someone's party label and ascertain certain tidbits of information about it like we used to. You, you just can't do that. You have to look at their policies. Because for me, uh, the 2008 election, that was the first one that I was old enough to vote. And then within a matter of, what, a year? Um, I see that Obama is not pushing for single payer. He's pushing for a shitty Republican health care proposal that doesn't even have a public option. And I think, wow, I was betrayed immediately the first time I ever voted. And uh, I'm never going to forget that. That pissed me off. And I'm not alone. There's a lot of people, you know, not and not just millennials, everyone, that they came out to vote for the first time for Barack Obama. And, you know, Bernie Sanders was kind of the same way. They came out to vote for the first time for him. And if someone who you believe in betrays you, that's something that you don't really get over. That's a scar that you're going to have forever. So you're always going to be cautious about the Democratic Party. And so they like that opportunity where they have the supermajority, you're absolutely right. 
they could have done something that would have made them exponentially popular for decades. They could have fought for single pair. They could have given us, you know, substantial reform and they didn't. So if we give Democrats a supermajority, we know that we get Republican light policies. That's it. So people are going to not be inclined to come out and support them if they know that their lives won't really be benefited that much by well, supporting Democrats. I still think mostly the problems of America, are, it's probably you voting green. I still think I, I think that everything's probably the Trump, uh, the Supreme Court. It's really your fault. And I think anybody who's uh, clear minded can see that it's your fault. I blame you, Susan Sarandon and um, uh, Josh Fox, probably. So, uh, Mike, thank you so much for coming on the show. Everybody who know, watches this show, I'm sure they know about your show. It's been a blast having you. Uh, thank you for having me, Jimmy. And thank so you so much. How are people responding You know, now that YouTube and Google have pulled the rug out from underneath us financially? How have your, have your uh, fans responded? They have, um, in, in overwhelming numbers, um, signed up for Patreon and they are donating and basically they've made up for any revenue I've lost from demonetization from the revenue crisis. Um, it, it's, it's crazy. It, it really goes to show you that people are, they're so dissatisfied with mainstream media. They're not going to let independent media outlets die, you know? Um, so I find it incredibly inspirational, even though it was the case that, yeah, this whole, this whole debacle was pretty uh, terrifying. I know you were probably afraid as well, but just to know the support that we have, um, behind these progressive ideals, um, we're not going anywhere. You know, this communicates to me that we're, we're gonna be strong and we're, we're only getting stronger. So even though it happened, you know, there was a silver lining that we saw just how powerful and, you know, responsive the progressive movement is. So I, I you know, overall, I, I found it, you know, inspirational, even though I'm still kind of undergoing the revenue um, fuckery right now. <laughs> but, you know, my, view, my viewers came to the rescue. It, it's amazing, it really is. Yeah, our um, our view our viewers have also stepped up. Um, it's it 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 was, you know, I, I didn't freak out. Uh, I don't think as much as other people did because I I've been doing live shows um lately. Mm -hmm. I started like last October. We started doing live Jimmy Dore shows, and and they've been very popular. They sell out a couple weeks ahead of time, and when people come, you know, I I meet I greet them afterwards. We sign whatever a t shirt or whatever, and I meet people. We take a picture. And people, you know, when when I was just a stand up comedian, people would come and talk about how funny the show is and how funny and other comedians they like. That doesn't happen anymore. People come to the show and they thank me for doing mm -hmm. what I'm doing because and I'm as, and, and, and in my head, I'm like, that's how bad things have gotten, that there's nowhere to get the truth about what's actually happening in this country, except you have to go to a YouTube show. I'm a late night comedian who's been used to telling the truth, you know, against the odds my whole career. So that's not nothing new to me. Uh, but it's just where people. So I knew by doing those live shows that the people who come to this show for the information, we're going to support it because I meet them. And they're again, like I say, they're just thankful. And these are grown up mm -hmm. people, right? Because that it just it's always shocking to me. Like, wow, there's someone who uh, looks like a response, looks like a doctor or someone who is responsible, and they're coming to my show for information, which makes me a little nervous. And, <laughs> right? You know, it's a make, lot of responsibility. Yes. Before all, <laughs> my, my only duty was to a punchline, and now I have to, you know, also make sure that I'm, you know, a hundred percent accurate and honest and all that stuff. And so, um, so that's why I didn't freak out as much. I knew the people who've been coming to the live shows. I see it in their eyes. I see how desperately shows like ours are needed. Shows like yours are needed. Kyle Kalinsky, the Young Turks. You know, people need to be able to get somewhere. Get it reflected back to them, the craziness that they're experiencing when they watch the media. You know, that's what Chomsky said. That's kind of one of the goals of the corporate media is to make people who think like us think like we're the only ones thinking like that. To make exactly. sure that no. Oh, so it must be no one else, because every time I turn on the TV, they're saying something opposite and no one feels like I do. But that's where we come in and we let people know they're not crazy and that they're actually uh, being fucked over by the corporations and the established once again and even your lefty media your mother jones magazine your nation your msnbc they are also part of the fuckery that is trying to gaslight you and if there's one thing that drives me crazy and gives me the fuel to do this show is the gaslighting by the establishment of, of progressives so i'm going to be here fighting against that gaslighting that uh from now until till, till i die 
And uh, yep. so that that's I think that's the bigger thing. Progressives have been uh, gaslighted. And if people don't know what that is, what gaslighting is, it's an old term from an old movie that if someone wanted to make you think you were crazy, that they would. Uh, that, that's what it is. They're trying to make you think you're crazy, even though you're not. So that's mm-hmm. what gaslighting is. They're trying to make me think that, oh, you, th- you're, you think Bernie Sanders is actually not sexist? Do you think he, you're, you know, so that's gaslighting. When they try to make you think something that's a fact isn't a fact. So uh, uh, I don't know how I got started on this whole rant. But, Mike, you have anything you want to close off with? No, I think you nailed it. Um, you, you stepped up and um, you filled a void um, that desperately needed to be filled. And, yeah, you're right. We are being gaslighted. And, you know— it, they're very effective at gaslighting people because, you know, it, it's just this whole idea. Um, humans are social creatures. So if we see all of our friends believing in something, then we feel crazy if we're on the outs. We, no, nobody wants to be part of the out group. We all want to be part of the in group. So it's really difficult to go against the grain and do something that makes you seemingly crazy or undesirable social, you know, socially if you disagree with something that is virtually, you know, everyone agrees on. So you're right. I think that we are, you know, providing a service. And I never really realized that what we were doing was this important and this significant until, you know, the community kind of came out in droves to support us when they saw that we were in trouble. Because people, you know, like same like you talked about how people um, you met after shows told you. I I had so many people, you know, send message through messages through Patreon saying, you you have to exist because without you then who's going to talk about this? Who's going to be a void? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that what we're doing right now is incredibly important. And like you said, they're never going to kill us off because even if, you know, this show becomes a, a show where I make zero dollars and I'm doing it, you know, uh, and making no money and I'm paying to do it, I'm going to do it so long as I think it's important because it's it's about the message. Like I started this show because um, I felt like I didn't have a voice um, and I felt like the mainstream media wasn't speaking for me. And now I want to be the voice for everyone else. Yeah, I mean, the, the the reason why this show started and, and really exists um, in it, in its current form is because of the primary and people got, got saw how the establishment media covered Bernie Sanders, even MSNBC, and they came to the Young Turks. And I happened to be on the Young Turks at the right time. And, and then uh, after the primary, uh, I couldn't get on board with Hillary and people who felt the same way came to my show. So mm-hmm. uh, that that's... That's why. That's how. That's how we're here. Well, listen, Mike. Thanks so much for taking time out. I know uh, I've been here for uh, over uh, forty minutes. So thanks so much for taking. Oh, thank you. This has been great, Jimmy. Okay, and uh, I like the fact that you're doing a show because he's an actual smart guy, unlike me, who's not an academic. I'm not well read. I'm a dumb guy I try. who spent my <laughs> spent my life in nightclubs making drunks laugh. But uh, so Mike is the he. Well, if I agree with him, it makes me feel good. So I know I'm doing something right. Mike, well, thanks that makes for, me feel good. <laughs> okay, the Humanist Report. Everybody, check it out. Thanks for being our guest, buddy. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm.